you guys always make me talk. Yeah. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. Did you go to college for it? You guys put that mic on and talk to the talk to the viewers. There you go, Ted. Me and Aaron set up a bunch of trail cameras back here, probably middle of the winter. So, coming back out to check them and just kind of scout around. We found a bunch of good sign out here this winter. Lots of rubs and beds and everything. And it's not too far off the road. So we're just coming back in here to grab these cameras and check around for some more sign. What do you guys got going on? Got ticks on a bash. Nice. I bet you do too. No, I'm I can sure see I them from here. I have a serious hate for seed ticks. There's a big daddy long leg. Look here. See? Nice. Good job, Aaron. Me and Ted put that camera up in here. When was that? February? January? January. Or I think it was February. Yeah, there was like snow on the ground though when we hung it right here over these trails. Now obviously it looks way different. But I'd be interested to see what's on it. Because we hung it over this trail crossing right here. And as you can tell, we put it 10 feet up in that tree and this one's not gone. We, I was kind of figuring that somebody would have stole it because that happens quite a bit. In fact, Jake found one that was stolen. What was that? A couple months ago? Yeah. Month or two ago. Wow. Cut it. Yeah, we just walk out with uh, bolt cutters and go. Nice. Yeah. I haven't had many people cut them. I'm not to worry about like that. Well, we just went out to check this camera that's been on, on a piece of public for about a month now, trying to get some pictures of some turkeys. And when we got there, the camera is gone. It was locked up. And somebody brought in a bolt cutter to cut the lock on us. But you guys can probably relate to that. If you put cameras up on public land or even private land, you might have had one stolen before. But the good thing is, for five years, Exodus offers a theft and accidental replacement policy. So we'll be able to get a camera for 50% off at least. Oh, there's some deer on there and turkeys. Got some deer and turkeys on there, he says. Not really sure which key goes to this lock, so we're trying them all and can't get any of them to work. We're gonna probably gonna have to cut our own lock to get the camera on. <laughs> Had to do that before. Not a pleasant experience. You're, you're serious, there's no way there's any other keys in your house. Yeah, these are the three that we've had for some time. Well, they won't work, so see that we got the wrong Tea or unless you have some, I don't have any of them. I gave them all to you. Yeah. ATD, ATD. Are you tell? Are you saying that for me? <laughs> I'm just saying it. You're the key keeper here, Poncho. Oops. Tried them all. It's not going to work. We got to figure out a way to get this camera off. We're going to have to cut the lock on our own camera to get it off. <laughs> Gosh, how stupid is that? I don't know what we're going to do. I guess I'll just. Take this stick and hit this thing and try to break it. All right, let's see rain. if you just beat the piss out of it. That's all I'm gonna do. Huh. Nice. You been working out? We're gonna chalk that one up as a failure, certainly. Just but we got about, our camera back at least. Think about the pictures that are gonna be on there, video. Yeah, there probably is some pretty sweet videos on there. All right, let's go get the other one. You guys got the keys for that one, or? Yeah, do you have the keys? I got those same keys, the same one. So if they work, they work. If not, she doesn't even know we're here. Sneaking up on that doe and a turkey flew across. 
right here. The fawn was laying right here in front of me. Huh? There's a fawn up there. How far? Up there where she was. Yeah, that's the fawn that was right here. It was laying right in here. It's old enough now to get up and move around a little bit. It was pointed right there this winter because those locust pods were falling and the snow was all tilled up where they had been digging down and eating those locust pods. You gonna beat this one down too? Nope. This set worked pretty good, although I don't know how many deer have walked in front of it recently. A little turkey nest tucked under this cedar. Got a field right over here. Looks like there's seven eggs in there. She's still laying on it. Might be hatching pretty soon. I'm just gonna leave it alone, keep walking. All right, we got back to the house. We checked those cards. And before I get to what we found on them, I wanna discuss a little bit about our trail camera strategy here for you. We don't run trail cameras in, I would call it the typical sense. I mean, during hunting season, we're usually worried about hunting and not checking trail cameras so much. But this particular area is one that Ted and I have already scouted. We've already found bedding already found potential setup locations. So now we're just putting the cameras up, as you can see, to try to learn about how the deer are using the area. And one way we love running trail cameras, and we talk about this often, but I'll reiterate the point, is we like using kind of a long-term approach. We hung these cameras in February, in the middle of winter, and we just pulled them, it's June now. But when you leave trail cameras out in a location for a long period of time like that, you really get to see how deer patterns change throughout the season. Like, for example, you can look at a lot of these trail camera videos on the one that we had set up over the honey locust. Well, when Ted and I were scouting in there, it was in the snow. We saw that these deer were feeding heavily on honey locust pods, so we put a camera up over it, and immediately we started getting pictures of deer and even got a bunch of turkeys going through there most of the winter until that snow melted off and then once we started getting into spring and the grass started growing up the deer quit using that area almost completely i mean that camera sat there for over a month and didn't get a single deer on it in contrast in february when there was snow on the ground they were feeding on those locust pods nearly every day those deer are feeding heavily on them in the winter especially in the snow and then after that snow melts off and it starts to warm up they leave them and I can think of multiple ways to apply that in the fall when it comes to hunting season. They just don't seem to feed on those honey locust pods near as heavily during the early part of the season. But once all the acorns have been cleaned up and they lose that green browse and stuff as the winter starts to come on, especially in the snow, they love those honey locust pods. So keep that in mind next year if you're hunting public land and you don't have crops or something like that or a food plot to hunt over. These deer will feed on natural vegetation and browse like those honey locust pods. The other camera that we had set up was just over a funnel, a trail crossing, and uh, got all kinds of cool videos of deer coming and going and even got some turkeys on there. There was one big old gobbler that was strutting with a hen on there, but very few, if any, mature bucks. At least that's what it looked like. I mean, most of the bucks had shed their antlers by the time that we hung that camera up, but I still didn't see very many shed bucks going through there. It was mostly big doe family groups and then young bucks and stuff and that's pretty typical of what we see in those types of funnel areas like that that one in particular has got a ton of deer sign around it and a lot of deer but the bucks especially the mature ones don't seem to hang right there very often they prefer to be in a secluded spot elsewhere i mean the the best buck bedding that ted and i found in relation to that camera location was over a half mile from there so i would assume that's the area that the bucks are in right now so see, as you start running trail cameras in spots, just because you don't get pictures of a mature buck doesn't necessarily mean that that intel that you gain off the cameras is useless. I mean, every time that we have one of those things out, we're, we're picking up stuff, we're learning stuff like that. If I don't get a mature buck on this camera for three and a half months, I know to flip the area and go to the other side or go to some of that buck bedding that we found previously. So that's food for thought. We just run trail cameras as a tool. It's not our entire strategy by any means if you've watched a lot of our videos, but they can certainly help you in a particular area try to find out what's going on. 
hopefully that was interesting we got lots more cool content for you coming up here on the channel greg's working on our minnesota scouting workshop videos right now we'll have those up in the next few days and we got some more hunt breakdowns and maybe even a blooper reel or two coming to you here real soon so thanks for watching we'll see you guys on the next one